That was really confusing. Okay, great. Got it. Okay, let's go. Hey, I'm Faye. I'm an illustrator, I'm an animator, and today I'm going to be talking about how I draw backgrounds. So let's go. So today we're talking about backgrounds because uh, I'm working on my thesis project right now. I'm a senior, so um, it's like a four minute animation project and I've been working on it all of this past semester and I will keep working on it into the spring semester. Uh, and I did a ton of backgrounds this week and uh, I needed some footage for a video. So let's talk about it. My laptop is here today, so my eye, my eyesight's gonna be a little wonky, uh, but I'm just watching it. So, uh, Started out with a pink guide, as I do for all of my drawings, and then I specify it with the blue line. Uh, this one is a fairly simple design and probably didn't need to be specified with blue just because, you know, it's a pretty basic car. Like the only specific details are some of the little ornaments hanging from the rear view mirror and then uh, the fishing poles and the cooler full of fish in the back of the car. Uh, this is the introduction of the dad character. The two main characters in my senior film are a little girl and her dad. Uh, the little girl is the main character, so the dad is kind of a, he's like an important side character, but like I was saying earlier, there's not a lot of time to specify him as a person, and fishing is his main hobby, so I decided to communicate that to the audience through this background. Um, and I'll show some footage of I haven't done the full animation for this yet, but I have done like the rough animation and rough lip sync for this scene. Uh, so you can see the main gag here is that the dad is like super big and wide and he hardly fits in the car and then the little girl is like super tiny compared to him. Uh, so he actually is covering a lot of the detail that I added into this scene, uh, but that is fine. Uh, something that is also important about uh, background specifically for animation is that you have to separate them into layers. A mistake that I made here um, that I don't exactly know how I'm gonna go back and fix quickly <laughs> is that I didn't put the uh, rear view mirror on its own layer, which you have to if you're going to animate characters in a different program and then put them on top of the background. That is life. <laughs> um, the coloring phase, we've gone through it. Uh, that's pretty much the same for every single piece I do. Uh, then I did a top layer of shadow and a bottom layer of light, uh, brown and then yellow. I think the top brown is like on blending mode uh, hard light, and then I think the one on, on the bottom is on blending mode vivid light, so to give them kind of different overlays. Um, and yeah, and then I think right here at the end, after I did the extra details of like the stitching in the chair and then also the shadows, um, I did like a purple overlay over the entire thing, put it on overlay mode, and then the opacity down a ton and yeah you can see it here so I did that just to make absolutely sure that all the colors were blending together because if you look back um, at some of the earlier shots uh, I don't know I, I chose a lot of browns and greens and blues that don't exactly like cohere together and adding the purple kind of um, meshes them a little better so I chose to do that I do that sometimes when I get to the end of an illustration and I feel like it's not super aesthetically pleasing and usually a little overlay of a common color like purple can help with that. For the next background that I drew, oh you can actually see uh, a little storyboarding that I was doing for a scene that I ended up cutting. This background is supposed to be the front of a middle school. I drew another background earlier that's like a wider shot of this, I'll put it here. Um, but we needed to have a shot close in on the benches because uh, the girl, the main character of the film, she gets her period at the dance and she has to call her dad to pick her up and take her home. So I tried to capture that mood of sitting in front of the school waiting for your parents to pick you up which is such a specific feeling and it's one that like as an adult you're nostalgic for because you know it, it's funny and kind of nice to remember a time uh, you know, when you relied so heavily on other people. Uh, being 13 is really hard. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's like the main character of this film, she's 13, so this is like a very real sadness and intense moment for her, so you know, it can't be too funny. So I was trying to capture all those emotions just in color, which I know is like a little um, intense of a goal. But I think in general, 
purple and yellow are always very nostalgic colors. I don't know if maybe that's just like a personal thing. Uh, but there's something very moody about them, very atmospheric, um, so I think that helps push this idea. Also just in the next phase of animation, after I'm done, like I think sound design is really going to help this shot. The film takes place in Florida, which is where I'm from, so the nighttime cicada sound, uh, maybe even like the very slight sound of the dance still going on without her, those are all things that also like help with atmosphere uh, beyond maybe just what color and design can do. I didn't really talk about the process of that one, but I feel like that one was the exact same process as the one before. Um, I also haven't finished the final animation for that one, but here's kind of the work in progress. Um, I comped in the car, the outside of it, from the scene that I just drew before. That was really confusing, I hope that was clear. <laughs> the first background I drew was the inside of the car, and this is the outside, okay. Great, got it, okay, let's go. So the last few backgrounds that I want to talk about, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to show them on the screen because they're both very long in different directions, uh, which is done in animation if you want to do like a pan shot, you know, because you need all that footage uh, to roll across. So I think I might just, uh, I'll show you the top of the canvas where I'm working and then maybe I'll just shift it when I'm working in different places. I'll give you a couple zoom outs to kind of see how I work on really big canvases like this. I mean, usually the way that I do work on like a really big long canvas is just part by part um, so I mean it'll be realistic to how I saw it when I was working on it okay so this background uh, in the film there is a really big creature and this is the opening shot that kind of alludes to that and gives the audience like the vibe you know that they're there's something big in the distance like a giant footprint um, which is, in a way, an homage to the opening of Gravity Falls. I'm going to be totally honest about that. I love that show. Um, it's impossible to make something that doesn't in some way reference it, you know? Uh, I was doing this from a distance, you know, because I did have to see the whole canvas to be able to lay down the gradient. Um, and I think there's actually still a lot of detail that will be added to this background later. This is more of just like a test to make sure that it looked right in After Effects, which is the program I used to scroll it down. Um, so yeah, I just laid down like light blue all the way to brown, which is supposed to be the bottom of the ocean. Um, and the whole idea for the shot is that the bow that you see at the top is really, really tiny, and it, but it's like, you know, it's like human sized for us. And you watch the little chain that the anchor is attached to go all the way to the bottom of the ocean, and you realize that it's resting in like a super ginormous footprint. Um, so yeah, I guess we can focus on, this is where I actually drew the footprints and um, the perspective on these is very wonky and I'm sure that's like, that's already been pointed out to me and I agree, it is a bit wonky. Um, and I think that like comes from the fact that it's a perspective that doesn't exist in real life and this is something that animators like run into a lot, which is like, you don't have to be constrained by physics and reality, so you kind of invent perspectives that don't exist, you invent like weights and motions that don't exist. Um, and I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that. You do have to focus on whether it is confusing for people, and I've gotten some feedback that the perspective on this shot is a bit confusing. Um, I still have to add in fish and stuff that will help people understand scale, uh, but criticism, criticism from audience is always valid. Uh, so this is definitely a background I'm gonna revisit. Uh, but as you can see, um, I did a pass of like light and shadow, trying to figure out what underwater looks like. I'm going to add a wave effect in After Effects and then I'm drawing these pieces of seaweed um, on their own layers because I brought them into After Effects and animated their motion separately, so I'll show that here. Uh, but yeah, this one is definitely one of the weirder backgrounds I've drawn recently, but I really like how it turned out and there's definitely still a ton of work to be done on it, but it worked for what it needed to be, which is a test shot. Um, and I'm excited. This is another super long background. Uh, this time it's a pan from left to right. Uh, it's a middle school hallway, which I was really excited to draw. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I have like very visceral emotional memories of middle school, and I feel like that really influences the way that I draw middle school backgrounds, uh, which there are a couple in this film, and I enjoy drawing them a lot. I think, especially if you went to public middle school, there's something very specific about the vibe. Uh, where you go back and you're nostalgic for it because there was a point in your life where that was your whole world and everything there was so important. 
Um, but you know, you see like a hundred middle schools, they all look exactly the same, like especially public middle schools that are like vaguely underfunded. It's just, they got the exact same floor and they got the exact same like cinder block walls. Uh, you know, the dance in the gym, like, I, it's, I don't know. It's interesting to me because it's like people all around the country slash world are just living the exact same life because I don't know, middle schools are all inherently the same. <laughs> so I'm not being very descriptive this uh, episode, but I mean, you know, it's everything's the exact same process. I put down the pink line, I do the brown outline, and then I lay down color. Um, and the way that I choose color is, I don't usually use a reference for the images that I'm working on unless it's like a really specific background that I can't picture in my mind. Uh, but this one was very clear to me in my mind, like, you know, the middle school that I went to had those just orangey white like cinder block walls, the bright blue lockers that all look the same, um, the big heavy like wooden doors with tons of dents in them, so that was what I was imitating here. Um, and there's still a lot of detail to be done in the gym doors because uh, I'm going to animate the kind of strobe lights that come from the dance, uh, but this is just a good base for this one before I put it into an animation program. Um, oh, and I gave the floors some texture, uh, like those little flecks, you know, because I feel like um, that's like pretty common um, for like standardized school environments. Um, and then I did the exact same thing that I did with the car background where I gave it like a top white lighting which was meant to be sort of fluorescent and glowy and then I just kind of did a, a darker vignette uh, just to make it a little grungier just because you know middle school is gross. Um, I also drew I don't have the I don't have the background footage for this because I drew this background like months ago in Photoshop but this is the inside of the bathroom um, very grungy so yeah. That's just what I worked on this week. I know not a super exciting video or anything, but I have a passion for backgrounds and hopefully I share that with you. Um, I don't know, if you somehow made it this far, leave your questions about backgrounds uh, in the comments or on Instagram and I will definitely answer them. I have nothing else to do, um, except for a ton of work on my thesis project. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I should probably go and edit this so I can get back to work on my film. Um, but I'll upload a video next week, so thank you, follow, like, share, whatever, um, and thanks, goodbye.